Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, man, machine, everything in between, to the Pokemon Marathon that you guys voted on way back in November, October, October, something like that. So, it's time for the Pokemon Marathon. Oh boy, I do not feel ready to do this, <laughs> right? We're gonna be starting with Pokemon Blue. Gonna start a new game, because, uh, not dealing with all that shit. Hello there! Welcome to the World of Pokemon! My name is Oak. People call me the Pokemon Prof. Hi, Pokemon Prof. This world is inhabited by creatures called Pokemon. Isn't that something? For example, people, Pokemon, wait, what? People, Pokemon, or pets. That was weird, I had like a weird comma. People, Pokemon, or pets. Others use them for fights. Myself, I study Pokemon as a profession. Profession is a big word for like a fucking five-year-old playing this game. First, what's your name? My name is, well, it's not blue. This is the story of, why am I so blind? There we go. This is the story of Red. Right, so your name's Red. You're damn right it is. This is my grandson. He's been your rival since you were a baby. Uh, what's his name? His name is Red. <laughs> I'm gonna be naming him Green, because I believe that is his actual official name, because Green was the first version of Pokemon. Not version of Pokemon, uh, the first two versions were red and green in Japan. Blue didn't come into, uh, Pokemon Blue didn't happen until it came over here to the west. Actually, that's a lie. <laughs> I'll talk more about that in a bit. That's right, I remember now, his name is Green. Red, your very own Pokemon legend is about to unfold. A world of dreams and adventures with Pokemon awaits. Let's go! Alright. So, kind of like I was saying earlier, um, what you call it? Pokemon Blue was an updated version of Pokemon Red and Green in Japan, and then, um, and then when Pokemon came over to the West, over here, to the Americas, fucking, uh, what, what did they do? They, uh, based Pokemon Red and Blue off of the um, off of the new version of Pokemon Blue that they had in Japan. That's where Pokemon Blue came from. Right, all boys, all boys leave home someday. It's said so on TV. Prof Oak next door is looking for you. Thanks, Mom. Thanks for just getting rid of me. All right. So, Pokemon Gen One. If we're gonna start this marathon, we're gonna start it off right. Now, when it comes to Pokemon, well, it comes to this marathon, I originally wanted to do, uh, you know, just Gen 1, all the way to Gen, whatever, all the way to Sword and Shield, or whatever, or whatever the fuck was happening at the time, and then play, like, Arceus. Over time, I then rethought that, and I was like, fuck it. Pokemon Marathon, let's do every Pokemon game that I can possibly get my hands on. Of course, some of them are gonna have full playthroughs, others are gonna have, like, highlight videos and stuff like that. But, as for Pokemon Gen 1, starting off with Pokemon Blue, baby. And, on top of that, I just want to point out, those of you who know about the old Pokemon, uh, I am playing an emulated version of it, just to let you know, just to make things easier, to go faster for, like, grinding and stuff like that, so we don't have to wait. And, um, also, with the emulated version, right here, there's color, right? 
So it's a little bit more enjoyable for you guys. Pokemon Blue has some color in it. Yo, Red, Gramps isn't around. Man, that sucks. I guess I'll just head on outside and check out if he's over here. Hey, wait, don't go out. Prof. Oak use instant transmission. It's unsafe while Pokemon live in the tall grass. You need your own Pokemon for your protection. I know. Here, come with me. So you're telling me I wasn't able to leave my town until now? Son, I told you not to go into the tall grass. Gramps, I'm fed up with waiting. Green? Let me think. I don't care. Oh, that's right. I told you to come. Just wait. Here, Red. There are three Pokemon here. Haha. <laughs> They're inside the Pokeballs. When I was young, I was a serious Pokemon trainer. In my old age, I have only three Pokemon left, but you can have one. Go ahead, choose. Hey, Gramps. What about me? What about you? Be patient, Green. Sit down and shut up. <laughs> Alright. So, this is your weird makeshift difficulty setting for the game. If you want your game to start off easy, well, you don't choose Charmander. If you want your game to start off hard, you choose Charmander, right? Shut up. Alright. Obviously prefers hot places. When it rains, steam is said to sprout from the tip of its tail. As its life is extinguished. <laughs> Don't ever wet its tail, it'll die. If you want a pretty normal route to go, choose Squirtle. After birth, its back swells and hardens into a shell, powerfully sprays foam from its mouth. Do you want Squirble? No, I don't want Squirble. And Bulbasaur, the seed Pokemon. A strange seed was planted on its back at birth. Wait, it was planted on its back at birth? It didn't... It wasn't born with it? That's kind of weird. The plant sprouts and grows with this Pokemon. So, you want the plant Pokemon? Bulbasaur? Bulbadorp? I like Bulbadorp. This Pokemon's really energetic. Red receives Bulbagorp. Do you want to give it a nickname? To the Bulbagorp? Sure, why not? Let's name him after the thing that everybody loves in this universe. Perfect. Just wonderful. Me and Kushnander are gonna go far. His name, his full name is Kushnander, but uh, but just call him Kush for short. I'll take this one then. Green receives Charmander. That's great. That's great, Green. That's good for you. That's good. Well, goodbye. Wait, Red. Let's check out our Pokemon. Come on. I'll take you on. Green wants the battle. He sends out Charmander. Go, Kushnander. Fuck him up. Now, funny thing, you can actually get your ass handed to you in this fight. Later games would make it easier so that, uh, you don't die <laughs> as much. But, uh, you can totally lose this fight, which I might actually do. It's up to whether the game wants me to win or not. How you fail at growling? How you manage to do that? Oh, this Charmander is so gonna kill me. Uh oh. Come on, give me critical. Uh oh. Come on. This is embarrassing. Just give me a critical. Just give me a crit. Uh huh. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on, I don't want to die. <laughs> I don't want to lose. Come on. Oh, that's not even funny. Ah, but it failed. Just don't. There you go. I've actually... <laughs> funny thing, first time I played Pokemon Red and Blue, 
I lost this fight, and I was really mad. <laughs> Kush gained 69 point. Nice. He got to level 6. Great. Red defeated green. What? Unbelievable. Inconceivable. Undescribable. Undeniable. I picked the wrong Pokemon. Red got 175 Poke Dollars for winning. Thank you. What the fuck was that? You saw him, like, twitch out for a moment? <laughs> he took, like, a double take. He said, what? <laughs> okay, I'll make my Pokemon fight to toughen it up. Red, Gramps, smell you later. I wish I had my own theme music. Professor Oak, he hurt my Pokemon. Can you heal it? Raise your young Pokemon by making it fight. Ah, oh, just like my firstborn. Thank you. What the fuck? So... Now that Cushion Ender got his ass handed to it a little bit, I'm gonna head home. Mom, heal my Pokemon. Red, you should take a quick rest. You're damn right I should. Thank you. Oh, good and your Pokemon are great. Thank you. Take care now. Bye. Leave my house. Mom's gonna throw so many ragers. <laughs> so, Pokemon Gym 1, right? First things first. Uh, let me show you some things that some of you guys may not be used to. First of all, head over to stats. In Gen 1, what's really fun about this is that there is no different uh, de uh, designation, I can't say the word, for special attack and special defense. They are both contributed to one stat called special, which causes a lot of stupid shit in this game. More on that when we uh, get more of our team. But also, on that some fun things happen here and there when it comes to gen 1 here we can see that Bulbadorp is uh, grass and poison right the way moves work in this game is that depending on the type of that move that you have that you're going to use will also affect the um it will also affect the category that the move is in so for grass types every grass move is a special attack. For poison types, every poison move is a special attack, I believe. That's really fucky. So, that means when Bulbasaur learns Vine Whip, instead of in Fire Red and Leaf Green, where that is considered a physical attack because you're physically whipping the shit out of something with a vine, in this game, it's classified as a special attack, which will, you know, take that special stat down there right also in gen 1 speed is pretty important you kind of want that it lets you go first right and since the special stat is all fucked up uh you know speed with special is a good thing to have so that's fun another fun thing is if we run into a Pidgey here Hopefully it's a Pidgey. Yeah! You're gonna notice something crazy. Go, Kushnander. Use Tackle. I missed. Great, thanks. Pidgey, use Gust. Oh no, it's super effective. Wait, no it's not. In Gen 1, Gust is, is categorized as a normal move, which also means it only does physical damage. That wouldn't be changed into Gen 2 when they would change uh, Gust into a flying type move. And then I think they would also change it to uh, do special damage, right? But yeah, so you don't have to worry about Pidgeys when you're choosing your Bulbasaur, right? Just beat its ass and uh, move on with your life. All right. Onward to, uh, whatchamacallit? What is this place called? I don't know. I want to say Luta Ro Little Root Town, but that's Gen 3. It's another Pidgey! Man, Bulbasaur, you're really, like, getting your ass handed to you. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little 5 Pidgey, too. Sand attack. Ah, shit. <laughs> Accuracy fell. I hate you, Pidgey. Maybe I should run away. Oh god. I'm pretty sure I don't have any item. Yeah. Uh oh. 
Come on, Bulbasaur, we gotta get out of here. Jesus. I know your name is Kush, but you're not supposed to be getting smoked up out here. What's happening? Welcome to the Pokey House. This is the Pokemon Center. Welcome to the Pokemon Center. Heal your Pokemon back to perfect health. Shall we heal your Pokemon? Yes, thank you. Pokemon Centers are safe havens. For those who don't know, you come up to a Pokemon Center and you get some free health care for your Pokemon. In the Mart over here, someplace we have to go. Hey, you came from Pallet Town. You're damn right I did. You know Profoke, right? His order came in. Will you take it to him? Red God Oak's parcel. Thank you. Now we're gonna head on back. To, uh, whatchamacallit? To, uh, Pallet Town. <laughs> I don't remember the name of the towns in Gen 1. See... What happened, what happened was, is that I was so ready to do this marathon way back in November when I did the poll. And then I was like, wait a minute. I want to get some artwork done for the thumbnails and shit, so... I'll just wait until that's done. And when I feel comfortable in, um, playing this game. So I did a test playthrough of this game, and everything was fresh in my mind, right? I was ready to sit down and record. And then... I guess my schedule just got, like, super busy. And then I was like, oh. Guess I'll record later. <laughs> and now it's later. So later that they announced another Pokemon game, Scarlet and Violet. And now I'm kind of mad. Because now that means I have to play that as well. I have to buy and play that game. When that comes out. Well, not when it comes out, but it'll be the last game we play in the Pokemon. Marathon, hopefully. But on top of that, I, I've forgotten like half the things I've known about Pokemon. Oh, Red. How my old Pokemon is? Well, it seems like you. Yeah, you must be talented as a Pokemon trainer. I had a stroke reading that for some reason. What? You have something for me? Red deliver Oak's parcel. Here you go. I'm not your fucking errand boy. Ah, oh, this is a custom Pokeball I ordered. Thank you. Gramps! Yes, Green, what do you want? What did you call me for? Oh, right. I have a request of you two. Yes, I'm listening. On the desk there is my invention, Pokedex. It automatically records data on Pokemon you've seen or caught. It's a high-tech encyclopedia. That's a big word for children. Red and Green, take these with you. You got Pokedex from Oak. To make a complete guide of all the Pokemon in the world. That was my dream. But I am too old. I cannot do it. So, I want you two to fulfill my dream for me. Get moving, you two. This is a great undertaking in Pokemon history. Alright, Gramps. Leave it all to me. I hate to say it, but I don't need you. I know. I'll borrow a town mat from my sis. I'll tell her not to lend you one, Red. <laughs> well, that's kind of fucky. Oh, also, it's kind of weird that you just assume that I'm gonna take up your dream for you. What, what if I have my own dreams? Oh, huh? Maybe I don't want to record this shit. What is this, Arceus? Pokemon Legends? Well... Without saying bye to my mom, I'm now gonna go off into the world of Pokemans. And we're going to train and become the strongest like no one ever was. First things first, I gotta get over my fear of Pidgeys. Come on. Ow, Pidgey. That hurts. Critical hit. Damn it. For those of you who are somehow new to Pokemon, critical hits will double your damage and also ignore any type of status effects that would fuck up that, um, that hit. So, crits are good. It's a random chance. Alright, I am going to 
I should actually grab some potions, now that I think about it. How much money do I have? Can I even check my money? And it red. There we go. Uh, I got 3,000. That's good enough for me. Hi there, may I help you? Yes, I would like to buy... I would like to buy, uh... Burn heals? Why, why do you have burn heals here? You got no potions, huh? Antidotes and burn heals. Thanks for being useless. Alright, so here's what's gonna happen. Throughout the playthrough, periodically, I am going to cut away to, uh, you know, alleviate some of the, some of the, uh, some of the, um, boring parts of grinding, because, you know, I would like to show off some stuff in Pokemans, but at the same time, since we're doing a marathon, we're gonna have to kind of do this as fast as we can to not make it last too long, right? So, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna grind up until I am uh, level 10, let's say. And then, uh, we'll be right back. Because the way I like to play Pokemon is that I kind of just, you know, get my Pokemon, like, as I go along, the Pokemon I want on my team, instead of just grabbing whatever Pokemon's in front of me. Ow. Nidoran female, you are fucking me up. Why am I doing, like, no damage? Oh, because you grout the shit out of me, that's why. Alright, there we go. So, without further ado, I'm gonna start... <coughs> wow, holy shit. I was holding in that sneeze, I was trying to speak without having that come out. Without further ado, I'm going to uh, start grinding until I get to level 10 with uh, Bulbacorp. And then, we will come right back and move on with the game. So I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, we are back. So, the initial plan was to train Bulbasaur up to level 10. But then I was like, you know what? I'm three levels away from learning Vine Whip. So Bulbasaur is now level 13. Which is going to make this fight a little easier coming up because the reason... I wanted to, um, the reason I wanted to train up Bulbasaur a bit is because there's an optional fight here. Hey, Red. You're going to the Pokemon League. Forget it. You probably don't even got no badges. Ain't even got no badge. The guard won't let you through. By the way, did your Pokemon get any stronger? Get ready for a Pokemon battle. Green wants to fight. Green sends out Pidgey. Go, Kushnander. So, what I'm gonna do, start with a Leech Seed. Mitigate some damage coming my way. Now, because Bulbasaur has good special attack, Fine Whip, it's gonna do a fair amount of damage. But the worst part about it is that, uh, it's not really going to help that much. Because it's, uh, it's not that strong against both flying type and fire type. So we're at a major disadvantage here. But that's okay. Oh my fucking god, we're starting to miss. Let's not do that. Good job, Bulbasaur. Now the real fight starts. Charmander, level 8. I think it might know Ember, I'm not sure. But it shouldn't really be using it. So hit you with a Leech Seed. Make my life a little bit easier. And then now we're just gonna tackle the shit out of each other. What the fuck? Stop missing, man! 
I get that you got sand in your eyes, but come on. That leech seed doing that work. That one damage. There we go. Enemy Charizard. Charizard. Wow. Charizard already? Enemy Charmander has fainted. You defeated Green. Aw, you just lucked out. Red got 280 Poke Dollars. Thank you. I heard Pokemon League has many tough trainers. I have to figure out how to get past them. You shouldn't quit dawdling. Wait, what? You shouldn't? <laughs> you should quit dawdling and get, on get a move on. I had a stroke. Sorry. All right, so just like uh, Green said, if you keep going over there, it's the entrance to the Pokemon League, but without any badges, you can't get on through. You need a total of eight badges that you will attain throughout this game on your Pokemon Adventure to make it to the Pokemon League to uh, beat the Elite Four and get recorded as a strong guy, super strong guy. So now that that's out the way, I'm going to head over here and just heal myself up. We're going to be relying on Bulbasaur for quite a while, right, until we get our next Pokemon, which wouldn't be until after, uh, basically outside the entrance of Mount Moon, I think it's called, Mount Moon, yeah, so, without further ado, let's head on into Viridian Forest. Alright, so up here, just gonna scoot along on through. Walk up here. And without further ado, welcome to Viridian Forest. This is probably the first time you'll come across any trainers, right? Came here with some friends. They're out for Pokemon fights. Looking out for Pokemon fights or some shit. I forgot, I wasn't paying attention. Let's see. I ran out of Pokeballs to catch Pokemon with. You should carry extras. You should. That is a good lesson. Hey, you have Pokemon. Come on, let's battle them. Bugcatcher wants to fight. Sends out a Weedle. Alright, so Bug Pokemon. Bo bug Pokemon start out pretty weak and puny. They are super effective against Grass Pokemon. They will fuck them up. And some of them no poison moves, which are super effective against grass as well. But not for me, because Bulbasaur is grass and poison. Isn't that nice? Bug Pokemon on average uh, tend to level up pretty fast. Around level 10, you should be having a... Uh, for, eh, for a good amount of bug Pokemon. Around level 10, you should be having its third evolution. Here in Viridian Forest, you can catch yourself a Caterpie and a Weedle, which will then turn into Metapod or Kakuna, and then turn into uh, Butterfree or uh, whatchamacallit, Beedrill. If you want a bug Pokemon and an early tier 3 Pokemon, you know, third evolution Pokemon, I would recommend uh, Beedrill over Butterfree. Mainly because Beedrill tends to have better stats. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't know what category Bug-type moves are under. I think they're under Physical? And Poison is under Special, yeah? And I believe... I believe Beedrill to have more Physical Attack. But how many... What Bug Attacks are there in this... In Jenna? Uh, in Gen 1, I think String Shot is here, right? There's String Shot. Harden is considered a normal move, I believe. <coughs> Damn. I've sneezed all over the place today. Actually, I don't think there's... Pen Missile? Pen Missile is a bug attack, but it's not really that good. Huh. I 
Actually, I don't think bug Pokemon are good in Gen 1. Shit. Well, at least in red and blue, right? Gen 2, that's a complete... That's a complete different story. Yeah, I think it's just like Pen, Missile, and String Shot. I can't think of any other Bug-type move in Gen 1. Jesus. Poison Sting is a uh, Poison-type, obviously. Yeah, I can't think of any other Bug-type move. Man. You know what? Just don't get a Bug-type Pokemon in Gen 1. Unless you're playing, you know, uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green. Red found an antidote. That can be used to cure poison. Alright, also in Verdian Forest, you can find yourself, uh, what would later become the main mascot of Pokemon, a Peekaboo. Peekaboo is not, eh, not, I don't want to say rare, but it's definitely, it definitely has a lower chance of showing up. Most of the time you're going to run against Metapods, Caterpie, Kakuna, Weedle, and the occasional Pikachu. If it feels like showing itself. Here in Gen 1, though, if you really want a Pikachu, go ahead and grab yourself a Pikachu. Pikachu's pretty good. Pikachu's actually a really good Pokemon. That, and it can use the exercise, because in Gen 1, it's fat. It's a fat boy. It's a fat, chunky boy. Super chunk. Alright. Hey! What's the hurry? Fight me. Now, do it. Bugcatcher wants to fight. Bugcatcher sends out Weedle. Gonna beat the shit out of you. Get him, Kushnander. Fuck it up. Ow, poison. No, it hurts so bad. There you go. Red defeated bug catcher. I give. You're good at this. Great. See you later, bug catcher. See you later, Viridian Forest. I'm pretty sure there's like other areas to explore in here and like other items to grab. I'm just not gonna do that, I guess. <laughs> you know, because I kind I kind of just autopilot it through there. Not gonna lie. So I don't. I didn't have no plans, right? So now we're in Pewter City. Here in Pewter City. We can come against our first gym leader. Come against our first gym leader. Yeah, I said it that way. We can fight our first gym leader, known as Brock. The rock type gym leader. As, you know, as the title as the title says, Brock tends to f use um what you call it? Rock type Pokémon which are strong, have a strong defense. They have strong physical defense, strong physical attack, but in general, their special is kind of low. So having Bulbasaur or or Squirtle on your team is pretty good. And even if you have Charmander, you might want to throw some of that Ember that way. Hiya! I can tell you have what it takes to become Pokemon Champ. I'm no trainer, but I can tell you how to win. Let me take you to the top. Alright, let's get happening. The first Pokemon out in the match is at the top of the Pokemon list. By changing the order of the Pokemon matches... Uh, wait, what? Cha what? By changing the order of the Pokemon matches could be made easier. God, that small text box really fucks up how I read that. So here in Pewter City Gym, you can either avoid this guy and fight Brock, but might as well fight him, get a taste of what you're up against. Stop right there, kid. You're still light gears from facing Brock. Dun, 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 dun. Junior Trainer wants to fight. Junior Trainer sends out Dick. Go, Kushnander. I'm surprised you actually have a Diglett here. I was kind of expecting, like, a Geodude or a fucking... A, uh, whatchamacallit? A Sandshrew. Critical hit. So Diglett is a ground type. Ground types are weak to water. And, uh, grass. And they do not affect flying types. Well, actually, I don't think that happens until Gen... Gen 2? Hmm, I'm not sure. 
Here's Sandtru. Sandtru is also a ground type. Ground types are also resistant to uh, fire types. Bye, Sandtru. Darn. Light years isn't a time, it's a measure of distance. Thanks for the money, loser. Alright. I'm Brock. I'm Pewter Jim's leader. I believe in a rock hard defense and determination. That's why all my Pokemon are all rock types. Don't you still, don't you? Well, wow. do you still want to challenge me? Fine then. Show me your best. Show me your moves. Damn, Brock, put a fucking shirt on, my guy. Brock wants to fight. Brock sends out Geodude. Geodude. Alright. So. Fine whip it. Uh, whip it real good. Geodude, done. Enemy Geodude has faded. You're level 16. Brock sends out Onyx. Now, I believe Onyx has Rock Tomb, which, if you got a Charmander on your team, it's probably gonna be kind of a difficult fight, right? So, again, at this point, I believe the only Pokemon that can really help you against Brock is a, a Squirtle or a Bulbasaur. I don't think you can get any Grass or Water types just yet. So, my recommendation is if you're having a hard time with Charmander, uh, just grab a couple of Pokemon, kind of just as cannon fodder, and then use Ember as much as you can. But, over here, oh god, that hurt my ears. Mm. That high pitch. That was not good. But over here, with Squirtle or Bulbasaur, make pretty easy work of Brock. Once you, you know, by the time you learn, you know, Vine Whip or Water Gun, it's easy. I took you for granted. As proof of your victory, here's the Boulder Badge. Red received the Boulder Badge. Thank you. That's an official Pokemon League badge. It bears its bearer. No, that is a bearer. -er 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 -er. Its bearer's Pokemon becomes more powerful. The Technique Flash can now be used any time. I got a thousand dollars. What? Kushnander's evolving. Oh my God! My little boy's going through puberty. Kush evolved into Ivysaur. For some reason, it's bipedal. Wait, take this with you. Red received TM34. A TM contains technique that can be taught to Pokemon. TM is good only once. So, when, so you use it once to teach a new technique. Pick that Pokemon carefully. TM34 contains Bide. Actually, yeah, no, Bide. Damn it, I don't think Rock Tomb exists until... Gen 3? Yeah, I don't think Rock Tomb exists until Gen 3. Your Pokemon will absorb damage in battle, then pay it back double. Cool. Thank you. Mine is kind of useless. I mean, at least in Gen 1. Like, it is a good defensive move, probably for, like, Rock type. But most of the time, it's not really going to help you out that much. So, over here, I want to check my... Items. What I had a hard time finding that. I only have two items, antidote, and the TM. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna buy one Pokeball. Now we have three items. And I'm also gonna buy um five potions. Five potions. Five. You know what? My bad. Not one Pokeball. I'm gonna buy five Pokeballs. Yes. Cool. And I'm gonna buy five potions. Cool. That way we have. That way we have, uh. You know. Four items? Alright, cool. So, little thing about Pokemon Gen 1 over here. Your item bag, your inventory, 
is actually very limited in this game. On top of that, key items also take up the space of that limited inventory. So, you want to be very careful what you carry around with you, right? But more importantly, uh, there are two items that you will get in this game that you kind of going to want to have with you. You're going to want to have them with you uh, for, for a bit. And you want them to be in the sixth slot in your inventory. That's mainly why I bought the Pokeballs and stuff. So, after defeating Brock, you can walk on over here. Before, there would be like a kid blocking your way, and he would tell you, No, you gotta go fight Brock. But now you tell him to go fuck himself. You looked at me, didn't you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Lass wants to fight. Lass sends out Pidgey. Oh, by the way, trainers don't have a... Trainers, you know, if they're not important, they don't have names until Gen 2, I think, so... <laughs> so everyone's known as Bug Catcher, or Lass, or Rock Climber. Or Black Belt, or Martial Artist, whatever the fuck they're called. Cool. Oh no, Gus, a normal type move. It hurts so much. Cool. So, I don't think I talked about it. Um, when Pokemon evolve, right, you can do, you're mean, I'm mean, fuck you. <laughs> so, our Pokemon just evolved, right? When Pokemon evolve, there are very few Pokemon in Gen 1 that do not evolve, but when Pokemon evolve, they get a big old boost to their stats, right? But the trade-off for them getting a giant boost for their stats right now is that they learn moves slower. So if you want to learn, if you want to learn a move, right, faster for your Pokemon, if you want them to learn all their moves faster, you keep them in their baby form. And by doing that, when it time when it comes time to evolve, you just press the B button and you tell them stop. You smack them. You say cut that shit out. Don't do it. Right? And they learn moves faster. Now, also, when they evolve, on top of getting the big boost, they require more experience to level up. So, that's just something to think about. Now, later on, there are Pokemon that evolve with items only. And when it comes to those type of Pokemon, they can only learn moves, you know, except for TMs and HMs, they can only learn moves when they're not evolved. So if you have a Pokemon that evolves with a stone, then um, then you want to keep that thing in its baby form until it learns the move that you want, and then you evolve it. And then after that, the only moves it's able to learn is uh, is um, TM and HM moves that you get throughout the game. Take that, Caterpie. Critical hit. Didn't mean to do that. You didn't have to die like that, Caterpie. But Weedle, I want you to die. I'm gonna take a drink of my water. My throat is actually pretty dry. I like took a nap today. And I guess, like, the cold air somehow got into my room from outside. And I woke up and my throat was fucking killing me, man. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of critical hits going out. You beat me again. Wait, I beat you again? What? There are other kinds of Pokemon than those found in the forest. Oh yeah, this guy. He goes like, You fought me in the forest, remember? And I'm like, No, I don't. <coughs> Hi, I like shorts. They're comfy and easy to wear. I don't like shorts. I don't like having my legs exposed. I don't want to worry about what my legs look like to other people, alright? I'm just gonna wear jeans. Ah, quick attack, damn it. Alright, so. Quick attack. 
let me explain that. There are moves in Pokemon games known as priority moves, which is basically item, uh, items. Moves like Quick Attack, in which that move will always go first. Now, when you have two priority moves up against each other, the Pokemon with the highest speed stat is going to go first, right? So if two Pokemon have Quick Attack and the other Pokemon has a high enough speed, they're going to go first. Now, there are other priority moves that take priority over, over things like Quick Attack. Ow, that hurt my eyeballs. <coughs> I just don't know what those moves are, right? For the ones that take over priority. I listen, I'm I'm knowledgeable about Pokemon. I'm not competitive, right? I don't believe it. Well believe it, buddy. Believe it! I'm gonna be Hokage one day. You're a trainer, so let's fight. Sounds like perfect logic. Now, here in Pokemon. You want to make sure that you fight every trainer you could, because in general, trainers, Pokemon, Pokemon battles, tend to give you more experience than fighting Pokemon in the wild. And I think the reason for that, well, I guess the uh, canonical reason for that is that, um, you know, that you get more battle experience by fighting battled experience Pokemon that other trainers would have, right? Meanwhile, wo wild Pokemon aren't really experience they're just kind of like lashing out but i think the actual reason for that for gameplay reasons is so that you don't it's so that you don't get overpowered just walking through places like mount moon so you know if you're looking if you're looking for experience make sure you make sure you run on back and fight trainers that you haven't fought before you know unless their levels are super low or something but, in general, it's not a good idea to avoid trainers. Unless, unless you know you can just... You can just go, you know, fuck you and not care. I'm level 18 already, Jesus. You're too powerful. There's Metapod. If you're gonna get a Metapod or Kakuna for some reason in Gen 1, make sure you get it by evolving your, uh, your Caterpie or Weedle, because wild Metapods and Kakuna only know the move Harden. And Harden is not an attack move. But once you do run out of power points, right, which are, which are, uh, I should have explained power points earlier. <laughs> Uh, Pokemon moves over here, right? Next to the move you have PP. Yes, they use PP. It stands for power points or poke points or power Pokemon point or poke power point, right? That's the amount of times you can use the move before you head on back to the Pokemon Center to restore those, right? Why Pokemon have power points? I guess I, I don't I don't really know why they have it in Gen 1 to be honest. Maybe so that you won't be able to spam certain powerful moves or something like that. But if a Pokemon runs out of power points, eh, worry a little bit, but don't worry too much because the Pokemon will then use a move called Struggle, which, I mean, it, it, it just kind of flails about and attacks as whatever it, like, however it can um, because it's out of energy, but it's still kind of going like, eh, right? So, it'll use a move called Struggle. Struggle will have recoil damage. Recoil damage meaning that it will, you will get hurt too for using that move. And Struggle is uh, classified as a normal type move, so it will be doing physical damage. Work off your physical stat. Hey, you're not wearing shorts. No, I'm not. You're right about that. You know, if you're a... Well, he's a youngster. But, like... If you're a bug catcher Pokemon trainer, right? Why would you wear shorts? Wouldn't you just constantly be getting bitten up? Wouldn't that be bad? So, over here, this boy has a Spearow. Now, Spearow... Ow. Spearow learns Peck. That actually really hurts. Now, Spearow... 
On average, is stronger Pokemon than Pidgey, but it has less evolutions. It has two evolutions. It turns into Fira, right? But it tends to have a higher, a higher physical attack stat. I'm gonna run over to the Pokemon Center real quick because, because you gave my Pokemon an Owie. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna turn around and go, fuck it. I don't need to go to the Pokemon Center, but since I'm all the way here, I might as well just do it, right? Because there's a Pokemon Center up ahead. Now, I've been, for the most part, I've been ignoring like NPCs or stuff, but it's a really good habit to walk around and talk to NPCs in the Pokemon game because they will be kind enough to hand you items now and again, some of them being TM moves, some of them being HM moves that you might need to progress, but we'll talk about HM moves when we get to that point. And then, uh, yeah, but in Gen 1, I kind of tend to avoid them because you have limited inventory. So I don't want to... I don't want to waste any slots, right? That look you gave me, it's so intriguing. Yeah, at least, at least she appreciates my look. The other girl was like, did you look at me? I'll fucking fight you. Jin's out, Rattana. What, that, what the hell did I just say? <laughs> I had a stroke. I, I meant to say she sends out Rattata, but for some reason I said Shin's out, Rattata. I mixed like three words. Ow. That hurts. Why you gotta tackle me like that? Why you gotta quick attack me like that, man? That's not cool. Nidoran male is up. So, fun thing. We saw the... Did we see the female ver variant earlier? Ooh. But, uh, there is no gender in, uh, Pokemon Gen 1. That won't happen until Gen 2, which, for the most part, won't really change too many things. But in Gen 1, there's only one Pokemon... Well, one Pokemon species that has a gender, which is the Nidoran. The Nidoran group. Because you have Nidoran male, which is the purple one, and Nidoran female, which is the blue one. Nidoran male tends to have more physical attack, and Nidoran female tends to have more special. But, uh... Is it special or is it defense? I think it, eh, it's... I think it's defense. I think it's both special and defense. But if you're gonna go for Nidoran... Uh, you want to pick up Nidoran male because Nidoran is classified as a poison as a poison type but later on will turn into a poison and ground type and mostly rely on physical attacks take that Caterpie man I like Caterpie now in real life I don't like bugs I'll be honest but I remember being a kid watching the Pokemon episode, and you got the episode with Caterpie, and I'm like, Caterpie is so fucking adorable, man! Why can't all bugs look like that in real life? Why can't they just be, like, cute, adorable little bastards? And why can't they just scream like, Pee! Pee! Caterpie! I would love bugs then, right? Like in Gen 2, for example, there's a Pokemon called Spinarak. It's a uh, spider Pokemon, and I fucking hate spiders. But, like, Spinarak is cute, man. That's a cute-ass, that's a cute-ass boy. 169? Nice. I saw that. You tried to escape from me. Done like dinner. What the fuck does that mean? Done like dinner? <laughs> Alright. Eek! Did you touch me? What? No? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not falling for that one. The moment you hear that, you just want to walk away. You just go, uh-uh, nope, nuh-uh. I'm not getting in trouble for something I didn't do. Enemy Jigglypuff, you sing. Alright, so here's Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff is a normal type Pokemon. Uh, and since it's a normal type Pokemon, it mainly specializes in def defense or special? I don't fucking know. But basically, Jigglypuff in Gen 1, it's not really that useful. The only big useful thing you get from Jigglypuff is uh, its Sing move, which, if you get hit by Sing, it puts your Pokemon to sleep. Which can last up to, f up to six turns, maybe, I think, in Gen 1. But if you want a Jigglypuff for some fucking reason, you can run over here in this patch of grass and you should be able to find one. You know, if you want to.